there's a very different kind of Miami lifestyle to what you would normally see at spring break. I often felt like I was in Europe. I, I felt like I was in the Mediterranean and it was just a whole different part, a whole different America that you would have never That's discovered. That's what I'm saying. Before. Like you'd be surprised because there's so much different music out there, different languages. Like you'd be like, wow, I didn't know this was here. Like you learn a lot of new things. Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official. Com. <laughs> THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton, and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp, and street culture. THTC, eco fashion redefined since 1999. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music. Street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Are you ready? Yes. Let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct central London, or central as you need to be. No excuses. You should be at home doing your thing like we are over here with the Appliance of Science. Oh, big shout out to Graffiti Kings, of course, each and every time. Uh, with the Appliance of Science, we are able to transmit live to MI, Miami, um, US of A, uh, to a lady that, in my opinion, is... Death. I mean, when I say destined, she's already killing it in her own state and more, you know. It's just over here. She's literally just coming over the surface with some newness. Diamond Doe inside the place. What are you saying, lady? What's going on? How y'all doing out there? <laughs> hey, we're keeping on. We're keeping on keeping on, right? You know? Okay. This is the way it is right now, isn't it? We're having to do it like this. I mean, I ain't going to come over to Miami any, anytime soon, right? That's right. But right now, hey, we're in our comfort zone, so let's make it rock. This thing kind of feels good like this. I mean, you know, we're, we, we're all a little kind of overwhelmed at best of times with, okay, three, two, one, cameras on, lights on, get coffee out of the way, let's go. You know, it's, it's pretty intense, right. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. But we can do this at home now. Yes, in your own comfort zone. So that's a good thing. How many, how many of these have you done in your comfort zone? Well, I've done several since you know, the whole COVID-19, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah you must be getting pretty used 15. to it. 15? Mm-hmm. 15? Like, yes, more than 15. What? Jesus Christ, I'm late to the party right now. <laughs> I am late to the Diamond Doe party. Listen, for those of you who don't know what's going on in, in MIA at the moment, look, I'm really one of the lucky ones, B, because I, I had a girlfriend that was in Miami. I spent like two years back and forth there for a good period of time, right? Right. Noughties or something, right? So I'm pretty well versed in uh, the Miami sound, the bass music, the, 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 the legacy that you guys as a state hold, Florida in general. You know, let's get into some of that because, of course, we're, we're going to talk about you. We're going to talk about Diamond in the Rough, the album. We're going to talk about a whole heap of stuff. But, uh, yeah, let's get into the, the, the beginnings for you, the music scene over in Miami. Okay, well, you know, what got me into the music scene is because my uncle was a DJ. And as a young girl coming up, I was always up under him being around artists. So that kind of like, you know, helped inspire me to really become an artist. And I could see myself as an artist coming up. So I was always stuck around the music. I find myself writing poems, writing lyrics. Until at one point I was like, you know what? This is a little easy. I really want to be an artist. I got a story to tell, you know? For real. So, I guess you kind of like, when you're inspired so deeply with like a, a relative, a, a close member of the family being knee deep in the culture, you, you just go like growing a relationship with it. Correct. Like next thing, you've got yourself a little calling right there and you're like, well, hold on. When, when do you make that jump to, to just right. committing, right? Yep. How old were you when that uh, first spawned in your head? 17. Damn, 17, huh? That's crazy. That's crazy. So what, you started putting pen, pen to paper and started writing lyrics from then? Well, I started at 14, started writing, you know, with the poems. And then from poems, I started, like, writing rhymes. Made sense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Talking about that. things that I go through, you know? And from there, I just got more educated into it, more deeply into it. And then 17, now I'm on a journey. That's crazy. That's crazy. There's there's something about uh, America as a whole, but you you take Florida 
as as an entity in itself, that's the size of England, and it's 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 so crazy how relative it is. But you you can make some serious money off of being yeah. a success in your own state, right? No, that's facts, right there. Yeah. That's facts. That's correct. Yeah. It's pretty scary because, you know, over in the, over here in the UK, it's like we've adapted so well to, um, I don't know, climatizing to a, a, a Western sound of of hip hop and rap okay. and you know and trap music. Okay. It still hasn't kind of broken through in the same way that an artist would in their own state. You know what I mean? It, it takes a lot more. I don't know why that is. It just takes a lot more. There's a lot of uh, hometown heroes that are involved in, in state music, right? Right. How, uh, how long did it take for you to, you know, to emerge in your state, so to speak? Um, it really didn't take that long for the simple fact is I've always been hustling it, you know? trying to do like you know we have little open mics here little showcases mm. so doing that so much you know people see you they see you struggling they see you working they see you grinding so they mm. don't forget things like that and then now as i'm taking off it makes it a lot more easier because i'm familiar with it so mm. they're familiar with my face they're familiar with my music they're familiar with me always in the music you know mm. grind showcase talent search stuff like that that's cold. That's cold. What would you say? Like, let's go back a little bit more with you with um, the whole DJ thing and you coming up. Like, what what were the tunes that were influencing you at that time? Well, at that time, they were like DJ Cali. They were like older, you know, a few DJs that's really not around now. Yeah. Um, it was Khaled was like a bona fide DJ. Khaled was no joke, right? Khaled was like yeah, he was he no was joke, a bona fide right? DJ. Yeah, yeah. Right. And more of the, you know, booty shaking bass, because that was a lot then. You know, they just, it's, which is in now, they just call it twerking now, you know? Mm-hmm. But it was more of booty shaking back then, but it's still the same thing. They mm-hmm. just changed the name a little bit from booty shaking, kind of clean it up, I guess, to twerk, mm-hmm. however you want to put it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I feel you. I mean, I, you know, I, I'd been in a couple of strip clubs back then because my, my girlfriend at the time, she worked in that industry and uh, it it really is a part of the lifestyle over there, you know? I mean, you go, it's Collins, right? That was the main strip, Collins? Yes, Collins and Ocean. Yeah, that's the one, see, right? So even pre, like, winter music conference and all that, I would be down there and there's a very different kind of Miami lifestyle to what you would normally see at spring break or you, what you'd see at winter music conference, right? It's a whole, this is a whole nother, b- below the line, other c- culture, right? Right. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Yeah, and it's like the good thing about music now is that it doesn't have to be just all bass. You know, no. you got wave, you got Spanish, Latino, you mm. know, you got rock and roll. Mm. So it's not just focusing on one music, it's all of it. Yeah. I feel like people got it a little bit twisted when, because, you know, as an export, Winter Music Conference was such a thing, but you'd go there and it'd be like EDM, EDM, EDM. But, you know, the heritage of of Miami and, you know, the, like you say, the Latinas, the, you know, the South America side of things, I often felt like I was in Europe. I, I felt like I was in the Mediterranean and it was just a whole different part, a whole different America that you would have never discovered before. Right, just by going to that conference, you're saying? No, just by just by being away from the co- conference, you know, and you go there and you're in this, you're you're in the real um, uh, community, the community. Okay. Of, do you know what I mean? It's like a, a, it's quite a melting pot of like different types of music, a lot of it leaning towards other influences that a lot of um, other America never saw. Right, that's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm saying. Like you'll be surprised because there's so much different music out there, different languages. Like you know. And you be like, wow, I didn't know this was here. Like, you learn a lot of new things. Mm. I, I also get the impression, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of, um, a lot of Miami's music scene, quote unquote, is, is quite mm-hmm. s- s- fragmented. There's be some people that are making crazy money and you wouldn't even know the names because they're not operating in the same genre or area facts. as well. Now that's facts, yeah. People mm. that you never heard of. They are big, they're making crazy money, they're streaming high. You're so right about that. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's mad because when you're, when you're there, you'll be like, oh, yeah, have you heard of so-and-so? And people, 
people are like, uh, no, no, we haven't. Right. But, you know, I mean, you're in the same kind of area, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I realized that too. So when I hear somebody I never heard of, I automatically go ahead and do my research. Yeah, yeah. I think that's hella important. Keeps you on top of the game. And listening to this new this new project, of course, you, you had the tune out with the joint out with Trina, which was crazy. I mean, that for me was like, yo, <laughs> oh, you starting like that. Is that how you're starting out? Right, I was like, right, that's yeah, bad. Taking off. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't play, right? Right, <laughs> right at all. Come about, because that, that, that's, that's, or that's a, that's a name, obviously, that we, you know, we know and relate with over here. How did that all come about? Well, you know, my team knew her team and they made things happen. So, and then I felt like it wouldn't be right to like come out and not really acknowledge, you know, because she made the way for all of us young female artists that are coming up that listen to her because mm-hmm. she, you know, I also was a fan of hers as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, she she uh she killed it. She killed it. She made the club yeah, bang and bang. Yeah, she made it bang. Yeah. And this this tune, man, like I love it. I was really fit. I was really digging on it when when I first heard it. Um, and then you know you get more deeper. Like there's a couple of tunes, like the show and tell track, for instance. Like you really hear your, you can hear your you, you you've been schooled in the art of of, of emceeing. Do you know what I mean? Like the the lyrical value of it, you know the, the in rhymes, the the, the flow. That for me, that was a tune that where you you know that was a good uh, respite of like you getting into into your flow state. You know what I mean? Right, right. I get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Thank you. How deep does it go? How does it how deep does it go with you and emceeing and writing lyrically? Um, it gets deep because you know I like to reflect on everyday living. You know things I go through in life. You know how can I inspire other people to help change their lives? So it gets kind of deep. Mm-hmm. And so what I wanted to change. So, yeah, that, what what what's going what's going through with you at the moment? Because obviously, like the world's a different place, probably from when you last even wrote that lyric. You know what I mean? It's like things changing. Like, oh, I mean, so what was the things back then that were, you know, you were conscious of when you were writing the when you were writing the album? I mean, you're right. Like at that time, it wasn't as crazy as it is right now. Mm-hmm. So. You know, it was a more, I was more in a little more comfort zone. Like I didn't have to really try to put too much in it. But now the way the world is doing the 360 with this whole COVID-19, mm-hmm. it's like, should I talk about war or <laughs> should I talk about the whole COVID-19 thing? You know, so it's, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. As an artist, I mean, I mean, I think everyone would, I'm about to say something reasonably spicy, but I think we can all relate to it. Like how far do you go down the the, the rabbit hole of getting real deep on current events to know that the world is going so fast that the next week it may not even be that relevant. That's crazy, right? Yes, it is. How far do you go? <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, you know, but you got to be careful because you don't want to go too deep and make it like all about politics, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. the world is changing like, like every minute, every second, something new. And then, like you said, it changes the topic. Like yeah. one minute they'll talk about this and then the next that's old and it's something new. So mm. you're right. You have to just be deeply involved and stay focused to continue to be on point with everything or you're going to lose focus or you're not going to be on topic. Yeah. Everything's changing tremendously. That's right. And when we think back to an era, particularly in hip hop, where that uh-huh. news, that news corresponding of a rapper talking about political things as a as a message to the world. Uh, it's it, the world is getting. Look at us now. We're here talking, you know, online as if it was like the next, you know, just no big deal. But you know, the the climate, the climate still needs a response from people because at the moment people are so like numbed. No one's really got a voice, but everyone thinks they have. It's crazy, right? And that's a part. That's the. To me, that's the very interesting thing of being an artist because you actually could be heard. Yeah, for sure. For sure. What's the, what's the, you know, just in terms of inspiration, what's the, what's going on in Miami right now that, that you can draw attention to without it being, without aging? Like around here, for instance, in London, there's like a hell of a lot of crazy like all the high streets are being shut down, everything's being closed down, curfews, da, 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 da. you know, 
that's really abnormal. That's not normal. But there is a certain temperature, I guess, in which it's uh, it still holds um, resistance and a lot of tension that probably has never left society. It's just everyone's feeling it rather than a minority, right? Um, right. What are the things that you're that's going on in Miami right now that you're you're drawing on that is of like a, alarm bell level? Yeah, we have to address this. What's what's going on in in society in Miami? Well, I can tell you that you know, like you can't like what well, really changing is crazy. You can't even go get gas unless you have on a mask. <gasps> Yeah, and then they say that um, if you get caught outside in public without a mask, you can get a ticket for that. How much so is the like, ticket? Um, I'm not sure how much the ticket is, but they will write you a ticket, I hear. So, uh, yeah, and you know, like, it's, whoever thought that, like, the world would be at a standstill, or it would be so important for you to, like, have a mask on or a hand sanitizer and bleach, like, you know, it's a real, real big deal right now. Real. You and know what the like, irony? The, when are we going to go back to living normal life? Well, that's what I'm thinking. Because the irony is, is that we chuck these masks on, but you know, anyone that's like clearing out asbestos right now got a bigger mask than us. But this is meant to be the most dangerous illness of, of our of our lives. <laughs> right, and it's crazy because it's like this is just it's like it just happened like out of nowhere. Yeah, and I'm saying like, okay, well. When are, do we have any cures? Do we have anything to stop this? Mm. Like, when are we going to go back to normal lives? You know, is there any, can we substitute this? But right now it's like, it's not. And everybody's panicking. Yeah, man. It's the same. It's the same in the UK. It's the same everywhere, though. It's exactly the same. Um, a lot of artists take homage, take, take, uh, take respite in being able to like stay indoors and create and be, have you found yourself doing that? Like getting involved in some music where you normally wouldn't have had the time to? Yes, because you know, like, you know, there's no show, we can't perform in clubs. So now it's like little things you can do that's going live, performing or just being around a small group of people which mm -hmm. artists like to be big. We like to be the center of attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, it's crazy. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, I wonder like how long is this going to last? Like, and it seems like it's really no deadline. Like this could take out the, the rest of the year and sometime in next year. Yeah. 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 I mean, we, we are getting inundated with information. Some of it's true. Some of it's false. Some of it's speculation. But here's what I've concluded, right? Is just chill, you know, and just let the wave pass. And I don't know, fingers crossed. Like you say, it, it's the uncertainty that's the kicker. But you just, you just have to, you just have to react as and when it happens. Because if you try and forecast too much, all of a right. sudden, you know what I mean? You're you're putting your bets on something that we have no control of, which is crazy. Yeah, but you know, then as an artist, as an entertainer, you want to know like where's the future for us right now because it's not looking so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a big question. Yeah, yeah, the biggest, the biggest sixty-four thousand dollar question. Because it's like our career is at a standstill. Mm -hmm. You know, thank mm -hmm. God for social media, which is helping us still. But how long can we do this? What's next? Mm -hmm. Who's going to solve this? How can we help, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine what it would be like if we didn't have social media? If we, you know, this, there was decades of things that's uncertainty, you know, wars and, and shit like that, and they didn't even have this. We're so lucky when you think about it. Think about it. Yeah, because without this, we would be forgotten. For real? All we would have is probably the radio. That's the closest thing we would have is the radio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because already TV's playing old school stuff just to kind of make up the hours for TV to be on. Yeah. Right. Can you imagine yeah. it back then? That'd be crazy. Yeah. What were your um, What were your shows like in uh, pre pre all of this BS? What were the shows like? If we used to go to a Diamond Doll show, tell us tell us the uh, tell tell us the turnout. How'd it go down? Man, I'm coming with the whole team, and <laughs> we gonna make crowd jump till the minute I get on stage, till the minute I get off. No games. So, see, see, only the best on Killer Keller podcast. We don't muck about around here. Tell them, go on, girl. Tell us how it goes. 
<laughs> how'd it go down? How'd it go down? I mean, you know, I'm coming on now. You know, I'm bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> I got the crowd with their hands in the air. You know, yeah, you coming. You know, <laughs> and then I'm going live. I'm going in. You know. Yeah, dude. That's what I like to hear. You done UK before? No. Have I been there before? Yeah. No. But I'll be oh, there soon. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I feel like I've I've got the new wave right now. Do you know what I mean? Connecting, right. connecting. You know it's going down, isn't it? But you this know? is the new wave. So yeah. you're feeling this good. Yeah, yeah. This is the new wave right now. Yeah, I'm going on gut. I'm going on it's guttural. It's guttural. <laughs> Um, talk about the Tory Lane's business because uh, that tune, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't really expecting that. It was like, when I hear it, when I hear mm-hmm. it, I feel like, obviously, there's the connectivity being that very much like Trina. Actually, actually, you know what? I'm going to re-up on that for a second. I, I do feel Trina by a... a, a Greater margin has okay. has the club world over here locked. Like she's definitely no, she's definitely noted. She's documented. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Okay. When Tory Lanes, uh, he kind of there was a peak, and then that was kind of it. But he, the, but the name is still reputable. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Uh huh. Um, but that being said, though, I like the fact that in the, on on the body of work, there's there is the there's that broad. Um, perspective of there being that salute to the, the classic the, the cult okay. classic of Trina but then you've got the upfront uh the upfront um uh name of, of someone like Tory Lanes. I like the way you did that okay I appreciate it thank you yeah how did it go down uh, working with him all right um actually it was a re- it, it was really really cool and smooth you know mm-hmm. Um, he's talented. He went in and he did his thing like that. Like it was nothing for him to go and lay that down. And then once he laid that down, then I came up with my verse. And then it's the I'll say like, you know, I don't know if everybody worked like that, but it's really nothing. Once you're talented and you got it, it's nothing to go ahead and lay it down. It doesn't take a year, it doesn't take a month. Mm. It, you know, just a day, like boom, 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 done. Right, because your soul is in it, you know, your heart is in it. So anytime you can collaborate with somebody like that, it's gonna be a magnificent project. So do you think there's this is more subject for debate, but do you think like when you've got a collaboration like that where someone's coming into your dragon layer? Mm-hmm. Um and I say that affectionately, I mean like they're coming into your layer, they're coming into your studio. Uh is that the way it went down? He came to you? Yes. So maybe he came, he came to you? hmm So maybe there's an argument that, you know, when someone has the kind of, quote, unquote, the carpet rolled out and they're coming into your layer, there is that immediate, like, all eyes on you kind of thing, or on that person. Right. So right. That, that kind of, the, it's almost like there isn't a real kind of challenge to step up because he's already stepped, he's already arrived, he's in the zone. Um, and perhaps there has to be that um, uh, there has to be that um, strength of from one side to the other. If you were going into his studio, then it'd probably be you. Do you know what I mean? Right. But him yeah, coming into his. Own, so you, when he yeah. came, he had to put on. He had to put yeah. on his best. Right. Yeah. 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 I got. You. And perhaps maybe there wasn't so much of that um, attention to detail. He just was like, "Yo, yeah, what." I'm already boosted because you're boosting me and we're here, we're doing this. I've already got the, you know what I mean? I'm already playing the game I'm in, you know? And then everyone else, because I've been there as well. And then all of a sudden you're in the pocket thinking to yourself, he, he's, he's got his confidence on, on fleek right now. I'm going to have to just, I'm going to be back in a minute, kind of thing. I'm going to quickly go and write something in my own place over there, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think that comes with the, I, that kind of comes with that. Uh, it's almost like uh, territorials sniffing isn't it you know just (laughs) yeah they want that's right you know you want to sneak and do it but i'm i'm surprised like he didn't have to do that oh shit so he just went straight in in and out not even not even questioning a thing just like boom 
picked the beat, gave him a second, and then he just went full force. It's the kind of thing you like, I think we all just say to ourselves, yeah, 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 we can do that. We can do that. You've got to be in a particular zone, haven't you? Yes. You, I'm sure you've been in that zone before. I have no doubt about it. Of course. Like, what artists have not <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the, that is the kind of chase that you're after. That's the, that's the addiction to it, isn't it? Knowing that your endorphin levels are going crazy and you just, you're just in the pocket and you've got it. That's like the, that's the thing we all chase for, right? Yeah, it's fun. It's like, you know, I know a lot of people don't like school, but you like school if you know how to do your work and you know what you got to do. And it's just a knockout, you know, like, mm -hmm. let me go knock this out. I mm -hmm. only got a few hours and then mm -hmm. my day is my day. I have the day to rest of myself. I have the rest of the day to myself. But yeah, it's like that because you know what you're doing. It's easy. Mm -hmm. yeah, so really. once it's, once you know what you're doing, then you, you're excited about it. You're confident about it, you know. It's not a doubt in your mind. It's not nothing to question. So, yeah, it's the best, isn't it? It's that feeling yes, of like being is. complete 360 control and you got it. Um, what collaborations? Who have you collaborated elsewhere with? You know, because it's 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 a small like, but as we've described, a fragmented scene. Who have you worked with elsewhere outside of the album? Um, you heard of Jack Boy? He's on the album too. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Okay. Then Little Pooty. I don't know if you're familiar with him. No, 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 no. Little Pooty. Yeah. Oh, no. What's it, what's kind of genre? He's another, yeah, he's another upcoming artist. Sick. And um, yeah, he, he has some nice lyrics. He's nice. He's making noise out here. Real. Yeah. You should be hearing from him soon on that side of town, so... Yeah, I'm all about that. I mean, like Miami comes from a lot of a, a huge, ped, you know, two live crew <laughs> for starters, like moving into like, like Khaled is, a, you know, another one, um, T-Pain. Right, right. I mean, I mean we know, do have six down here, right. So, you know, we have a lot of people to co-sign us, but he's actually from Orlando. So I think that he's the first to really put Orlando on a map like that. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. So yeah. that's that works in his favor. Yeah, he's putting off for his city. That's so sick. Who, who, who else is blowing up in outside of um, Miami? Who, who you know? What other what other artists are holding their their cities and towns down? Like Little Pooty, for instance. Hot boy. Are you hot familiar boy. with Hot Boy? Rings bells. Yeah, rings bells. Yeah, yeah. Hot boy. Where's he based? He's based right here in Miami. Oh shit! Oh shit! Yeah. So it's, Di it's Diamond Doll and uh, Hot Boy that we gotta keep our eyes, eyes, eyes and ears to the yeah, ground. Yeah, keep your eyes on that. You smart. I like yeah. you. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> well, you know, you know how we roll. Birds of a feather flock together, isn't that the same? <laughs> right. <laughs> what's the future hold for you, girl? What, 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 what's what's the future? What's I mean, this is an unpredictable time right now, right? But you know, we have to ask the big questions because you can't keep the music stopping, right? Surely can't. You gotta keep it rolling. Yeah, that's right. So, so more music, more music, more music. More music, more videos, more blogs, more everything. Good stuff. Oh man, bring more dope to the industry. What's the what's an average day for what's an average day for Diamond Dog? Because you talk about blogs and you talk about fifteen plus of these international calls. Like, what's an give us an average day for you? Well, okay, you know when I get up in the morning, I do my little boot camp class, and then from there. If I don't have any interviews, I go to my interviews, and then I go to my trap. I have a little salon. Uh -huh. And then from there, our clubs isn't open yet, but I'm a night bartender. So oh, I'll go to the shop. Dope. Go to the mm -hmm. So you do the boot camp thing as well? Yeah, in the morning. Is Smoothie King still open over there? I used to love Smoothie King. Yes, I know. Me too. <laughs> yes, Smoothie King is still open over here. What do you know about that? Y'all don't hey, know hey. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I was a local for a little while. Oh, double okay. protein, double protein and caffeine. Let's go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I like the banana boat. Yeah, you do? Me too. Yes, I do. <laughs> Give me the big one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know that, you know that. Right, right. <laughs> and I filled out my card, stamp, 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 stamp. I give it a... <laughs> <laughs> right, so you get your little points, okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, the funny thing was, I'll be gone for three months, back again the following three months. So I just pull out those cards. I've got three or four of them ready to go, you know. You're looking too balling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was throwing them out like rice, you know. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> so it is really a 24-hour business for you. Like you're, you're hustling, yeah. f- doing the Miami lifestyle because, you know, yes. even, even doing the bartending stuff, that's, that's actually part of the course of being from, you know, being clubland f- f- for someone in Miami in the music world, right? Yeah, it is, because I'm behind a the bar, then they playing my music, and I see everybody going crazy, and I'm like, okay, they don't even know that's me, some of them. But they're that's like, sick. okay, back that up, and I'm like, that's what's up. <laughs> that is what's so, up. Do you have control of the playlist? Come on. You've got to have control of the playlist. Yeah, like, when I, before I get to work, I tell the DJ, I hope you got this in rotation. He's like, I got you. I say, you know, you got to play that every hour and hour. He's like, I got you. And then, you know, I give him a little tip, and mm-hmm. we're going through the night. So. It's interesting you say it like that because you know what there is a real relativity to you know back in the day you'd uh-huh. go to a club you'd go to a club and if you was if you were emceeing with your DJ or you were friends with the DJ that you were hanging out with you know you would road test your own tunes you'd road test them but I guess now this is what you're doing right there is the new equivocal right right that's so it's sick. another way of networking when I'm working the bartending it's another way of networking my music and networking me as an artist. So that is, that's like, that's well ahead of the game. I like that because you're doing, you're, you're kind of working to your environment as well. Correct. What's the tune out of all of the, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of tunes on this EP album. What's the tune that you're like, yo, this is, this is, get, this is getting the, the rotation that I want to see? The automatic. Yeah. Yeah, that that's makes sense. The one in the, in the highest rotation. Of course, the way is my favorite, but I don't know. Mm. Like, it's getting crazy spins. Dwayne's Dwayne's going to be one of those ones, right? That people are going to be like coming back to a couple of years, and all of a sudden, it's like they catch up on it, and then all of a sudden, you'll see the numbers pop, and you'll be like, "Oh, right, fucking three years later," you know? (laughs) Right. That's for instance, that's Dwayne right now. Like, still making spins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. I think that's going to be a cult class. That's going to be one of those tunes that, I don't know, it's, that's going to be like your... It's going to be a classic. Like, yeah. It's gonna, old. Yeah, and you're going to have to play that in your life set all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be one of those ones. When automatic, I can feel it because there's a, it's commercial and, mm-hmm. and the concept around it, automatic is the name, the concept around it, Okay. Like I get the I get the value in it. People can relate right. to it. Right. Yes, everybody. Mm. They can all so, relate to it. Yes. And that's a good thing. That's what I wanted. Something that everybody could relate to. No matter the age, no matter the race, you know? Do you think people get it? Because, you know, we're dealing in a, in an era of of uh of audience that is quite fractioned. There ain't a lot of you know, there ain't some people listen to a lot of lyrics. Then there's okay. other people that just want the soundtrack to their their evening. Because because there's a couple of tunes on the on the EP that I can t- I know I I get it from your point of view like you're 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 sh- you know you're shooting you're shooting for particular audiences and it makes complete sense. Automatic is one of, is one of those tunes. Right, right. Do you, do you feel like you're you're having to um, mold particular songs because not everyone will get a concept like Automatic? Um, sort of, but my main goal is to try to do music so everybody can relate. I don't want to single certain people out in certain crowds or certain race or whatever. I want to do music where everyone can relate. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm, I feel you. So, yeah, I don't want to like pick and choose because it's not about doing music for this person and that person. It's for everybody. Mm. Yeah, I feel that. No matter what you're going through in life, like no matter, you know, what music you like, even if you don't listen to this type of music, I want to get in your hair. you like, dang, you listen to it and be like, I like that. You know, and it makes you want to switch up because some people be stuck in their ways and some mm-hmm. people just like they explore like me, you know. So you want to yeah. change people's thought process or change the way they think about music. OK, it ain't so bad me trying this music and listen to this. You know, I actually like it. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to try and break people's cycles of being in that comfort zone of listening to the same mm, shit. Yep. That is facts right there. And that kills me. <laughs> kills me. <laughs> um, yeah. You're right. I think with your your sound, and I'm only meaning by sound, you know where you're from. It's like there is a 
there is a there's a, a, a sentiment to the overall value of the, the product you right you take you take your you, you take your scene with you do you know what I mean it's almost like you've scooped yes. a bit of you know Miami up and it's in it's within that that musical content Stick with it. correct correct you know because as an artist and being a female it's all about making a statement you know I don't want mm. nobody to get confused about who Diamond Doll is I need you to know who Diamond Doll is mm-hmm. and where she's from yeah that that definitely permeates that that 100 percent that's the one that I, I, I feel I agree with you yeah. so I see that you know you you pay attention I try <laughs> yeah. in a world of noise you pay close attention you're very <laughs> observant when you hear music you hear artists that's a good thing so you know they can't fool you <laughs> they can't no it fools me never fools me right. you can you can hey listen you know i think you'll relate to this as well is after you've been in the industry for so long you know you you know how to be fooled <laughs> right no you're right do you feel do you feel like that with every release you put out in fact, I almost know the answer to this, but every release you put out, you feel a little bit more like an extra piece of armor hits you like that and you're like... Right. It's like a passport. Mm. I need another stamp. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I love that analogy. That's <laughs> sick. Yeah. Right. I need another stamp every time. Make that, make that passport look like a manga comic by the time you're done. It's like... For real. Like, <laughs> you don't see nothing but stamps and ink, like... You don't even know what the paper is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Can't even see your name because oh. you're flying, you know. Making moves. And then you're flying. Oh, it is the passport effect. And that's a tune, the passport right. effect. Oh. Right. Like that. You can like have it. go ahead. <laughs> Come on. Wow. <laughs> um, so the future's look bright. You're keeping on keeping on. And uh, please come back and see us again. You're a superstar. No problem. No problem. Anytime. And thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you to the crowd for watching and listening. Hey, I'm following your Instagram right now. I'm going to spread the word right now. So, yo, let's do this proper, huh? Yes. Let's go. Diamond Doll, you're a star. Thank you so much for joining us on the Killer Keller podcast. Um, and thank you. Send love to Miami for me, would you? And send love out there. <laughs> you got you. We'll get you over real soon. But until then, let's get this thing pubbed out, man. Okay, let's do it. Stay lucky, girl. Killer Keller podcast. We are like in was out of fashion. Stay locked on. Don't forget to share and do the deal. All right. Take care of yourselves. Don't talk to any strangers. No, I won't. <laughs> Wear your mask. Hold tight. Peace.